We've looked at a number of buildings and statues that would have been found at Rome itself. And in particular, we've looked at two prescribed sources in great detail. Uh, the textbook mentions the building program of Agrippa, of which you've got a PowerPoint on. Um, but the prescribed sources for that are the Forum of Augustus and the Temple of Mars Altor uh, and the Arapakis. But these are also uh, prescribed sources. Um, and we're going to have a quick look at Augustus's image in the empire, not in Rome itself. It's very different out there in the empire uh, where uh, the eastern provinces were certainly used to their rulers being uh, deified, being gods and worshipping their rulers as though they are gods. Um, certainly not to be encouraged at Rome itself. Uh, he was only ever really the son of a god uh, at Rome. Uh, but in the provinces, uh, particularly in the eastern provinces, uh, he will be worshipped as a god. Here's number one, Classicist view. This is from Mary Beard, uh, one of our more famous classicists, actually a Shrewsbury girl um, who did her Latin and Greek originally in Shrewsbury High School for Girls. So uh, Shrewsbury has got an excellent pedigree for uh, producing classicists. So she says this about Augustus's image in the empire. The Roman Empire was flooded with Augustus's face as part of a sy systemic campaign to spread the word that a new Rome had arrived. Here's our first image of Augustus, and it certainly does not look like the Prima Porta statue that was made for Livia's villa um, in Italy. This is Augustus at the Calabash Gate. Its location is in Egypt, and unsurprisingly, you can see here that this is Augustus uh, being described as though he is a pharaoh. Post Actium, of course, he has the control of Egypt. First question, why is this image uh, on the Calabasha Gate in Egypt? Well, number one, the Romans didn't wish to impose their own religion on the people of Egypt, but wanted to use some of the images and culture of Egypt for their own purposes. Number two, some foreign practices from Egypt were already recognised at Rome. The worship of Isis was a favourite with the Romans. We mustn't forget that uh, Cleopatra herself uh, saw herself as the as the modern physical embodiment of, of Isis. Um, she was Isis for all intents and purposes. And it is not scandalous for Augustus to identify with himself as a god in Egypt. This is a province and not Rome itself. The Egyptians were very used to pharaohs who identified with the gods. He couldn't be seen as being less than uh, the previous rulers by denying uh, his deity in Egypt and in the eastern provinces. Having a look at the way that he is depicted on the Calabasha Gate in Egypt, he's depicted in the style of the pharaohs. He's identified on the left of the image by a cartouche which states that he is the Roman and Caesar the god or the son of a god. He's shirtless fashionable for Egyptian royalty and wearing the Egyptian crown. His short skirt is typical of the Egyptian fashion. And Augustus presents the goddess Isis with an offering, the hieroglyphic symbol of fields three times. He is asking for fertility. This also emphasizes his piety to the gods, an image often found in his official portrayals in Rome. It's unusual because it's Egyptian in style rather than Roman and other reliefs show other deities crowning Augustus, implying that they improve of his regime. Here is the classicist, A.H.M. Jones, and he said this about the Calabasha Gate, Augustus was keen for himself to be embraced into the religion of the, his new province rather than dictate a new religion, as shown on the Calabasha Gate image, where he is actively worshiping Isis, this shows us that Augustus was a respectful ruler and listened to the people. And I think what A.H.M. Jones 
is reminding us here is that Isis is always associated with uh, fertility and uh, the spirit of Egypt itself. He is bowing down uh, and giving uh, respect to that particular goddess. There's lots of information out there about the Meroe head, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time describing this. The next two slides, there's a podcast to listen to, and then there's a whole lecture by uh, Mary Beard also to watch. But the Meroe head in its simplest form was found in Sudan, probably originated in Egypt and apparently found quite close to the Calabasha Gate, only a few miles down the road. It's similar in style to the statue at Prima Porta, the forelocks, the chin and the ears all match the Prima Porta statue. In Egypt, uh, Augustus had portrayed himself to the native provincials as a pharaoh, but here uh, Meroe has got a number of um, Roman citizens living there, and so he is portraying himself to those Roman citizens as a Roman, uh, the Meroe head. Augustus is worshipped as divine in the eastern provinces because the Hellenistic kingdoms of the east have divine rulers. Augustus couldn't be seen to be less important than the Hellenistic rulers of the east, so he has to be uh, worshipped as a deity in the eastern provinces. So he downplays his divinity at Rome because the Romans don't like kings and they certainly wouldn't like living gods ruling among them, but even there he portrays himself as the son of a god and obviously in Rome, he uh, promotes the cult of Julius Caesar, uh, his divine father, but never worshipped as a, as a god at Rome itself. And it's important to know that there is a difference between the way that he portrays himself uh, at Rome, never worshipped himself, never divine himself at Rome, uh, but is promoting the cult of his divine father there. We've looked very briefly at the Meroe head, um, but what I want you to do now is to go to this web page here, uh, the BBC programmes, and uh, listen to the podcast. It's a half hour podcast. And just make uh, about five or six points as you listen to this podcast. Before you move on to the next slide, slide seven, which has got uh, classicist views from Mary Beard. That's an hour long podcast and that describes not just the Meroe head, but some of the images of Augustus. And I would expect you from an hour long program to be picking about uh, 10 or uh, 10 points from that and attributing them to uh, the classicist Mary Beard. And the other two that you've looked at are effectively in Africa, one's in Egypt, one's in, in Kush, in, in Meroe. Um, this one, however, is in Croatia, which is um, European. Um, and this is the Temple of Augustus and Roma, the spirit of Rome at Pula. Officially, provincials worshipped Augustus alongside the cult of Roma. Roma, the spirit of Rome, was fine to worship. And that, of course, encouraged patriotism. A little bit like worshipping Britannia or the spirit of Britain would encourage patriotism here. And by placing a statue of Augustus alongside the statue of Roma, it satisfies those who wish to worship Augustus and also those that didn't. Officially, he wasn't worshipped, but Roma was. But if you have the image of the emperor next to the spirit of Rome, it's obvious that in people's minds, that he becomes associated with the spirit of the state. So the Temple of Roma and Augustus is found at Pula in modern day Croatia. And he also encourages the cult of the divine Julius in the in the provinces, as well as the worship of his own genius with the worship of the Laris and the Penates, the household gods, those household gods which had been taken uh, by Aeneas from a burning Troy. And those Penates, the household gods, were worshipped in domestic rituals in every house right across the empire. So if Aeneas, Augustus' ancestor, was meant to have provided every house with their household gods, the Penates, it's not surprising um, that Augustus 
would be associated uh, with the provision of um, divinity as well. So here's some summary questions for you. Number one, listen to the podcast from the BBC, Around the World in 100 Objects, that's slide eight. Find about five quotes. Remember, the web page it's sitting on has got an audio transcript and some quotes from other people, including the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, who's actually got a classics degree. Question number two, watch and listen to the YouTube video by Mary Beard and find about 10 quotes about the image of Augustus in the provinces or the Meroe head itself. Write them down and please remember to attribute them to her. These are the sort of things that you can put into a 30 mark essay to show that you really understand what other classicists are thinking. And then lastly, there's a table for you to fill in here. How did Augustus's image in the provinces differ from his image at Rome? This might be a 20 mark question, for instance. So I want you to copy the table out and see if you can fill it in.